I want you to imagine that you're a middle developer at Harmony Protocol. It's a Thursday morning, June the 23rd, 2022, with a hot Silicon Valley sunshine beating down on you from above. You calmly tap your lanyard from the glass door to enter Harmony's air-conditioned work zone. Heading over to the coffee machine, there's a strange kind of energy in the office. Nobody greets you, not even the familiar din of the keyboards tapping away. Everyone's looking at their phones, and so you ask, what's going on? The eerie silence is broken by your friend Michael, a fellow developer, who says, check Slack, the Horizon Bridge has been hacked, it's big. You look down at your phone, and sure enough, there's an announcement from the CEO, Stephen Sir. It came from three minutes ago, and it reads, Colleagues, as many of you now know, at 5.30 a.m. PST this morning, 11 transactions occurred initiated by an unknown attacker that extracted tokens stored in the bridge. We're estimating this hack to be in the region of 100 million US dollars. Please stay calm. We're trying our best to remedy the situation. You look up from the message, apathetically tuning into the sharp buzz of the coffee machine, and can't help but envy the team that managed to one-up your code and make off with a fortune that only gods could dream of. The reasoning for the eerie silence in the office now becomes apparent. Indeed, it seems that even Stephen, a researcher at Microsoft, a senior infrastructure engineer at Google, a principal engineer at Apple, wasn't immune to the endeavors of unknown hackers. Months later, and the company's still no closer to uncovering the identities of the hackers responsible, it seems that they got away with it. And how brilliant it must be. Imagine crypto bandits setting off into the sunset with a brand new yacht. With over $2 billion in assets stolen in crypto this year alone, Harmony's Horizon hack wasn't an isolated incident. Crypto hacking is on the rise, and today we're going to be exploring how you, yes, you, can become a crypto hacker. My name is Bradley, this is Blockhouse. Let's get started. So before we dive into the unique susceptibility of crypto as a target industry for hackers, that is, and most importantly, the methods that you can use to claim your title as super crypto hacking megamind, it's important to know whether you're up to the challenge. So let's go through some of the ingredients, three ingredients rather, or prerequisites that you may need to become a successful hacker. The truth is to perform a successful hack yourself in the crypto space or otherwise, you need to have a very basic understanding of programming at least. By switching your operating system to Linux and installing some open source hacking tools, you're already halfway there. However, if you really want to do something that nobody has done before and therefore maximize your chances of a successful hack, especially in the world of crypto, an advanced understanding of programming languages is essential. For example, if you're looking to develop malware, you will need C and C++ to write exploits and shell codes. If you want to develop, say, a lookalike site that may be used to fish data, you'll need HTML and PHP. However, knowledge isn't always necessary if you have money. Yeah, so when it comes to crypto hacking, it's fair to say that a little bit of money helps. If you're tight on time and big on bank, you can hire a hacker from the dark web to basically perform the hack for you. In fact, researchers at Comparatech examined more than 100 listings from 12 different hacking services listed on the dark net, and they found that computer or phone hacking can cost around $343 per instance which will give you access to the public and private keys that may be stored on a device. However, when you're hacking the blockchain itself, things can get seriously expensive. Gaining control of validators on a network can run you into the thousands, but none of this has any importance unless you have the right amount of motivation. Ask yourself, is it really worth it? Do you have the determination to see this through? In the best case scenario, you'll have to live the rest of your life in knowledge that you stole from someone else or ruined a legitimate business's reputation. In the worst case scenario, you'll face criminal penalties, including criminal fines, retribution, and even jail time. So if you have the knowledge, the money, and the motivation, then well, you've got the three ingredients of a crypto hacker, my friend. The next step in our journey today is to look into why crypto wallets are so susceptible to hacking in the first place. After all, aren't you curious why we included the word crypto in today's title? First of all, there's a human factor that comes into play, and it manifests itself in a variety of different ways. Did you know that it's estimated that around 20% of Bitcoin is inaccessible due to lost private keys? Even a Ukrainian parliament member admitted that he accidentally erased an encrypted file with his private key on it, permanently closing access to the 400 Bitcoin he had saved up. This goes a long way to demonstrate human carelessness when there isn't a centralized authority to keep them in check. Blockchain technology and non-custodial systems come with a steep learning curve, and for people joining the crypto bandwagon for the first time, it can be confusing. 
Best practices are often ignored or unknown, and as such, these people are very easy to take advantage of. And it's not helped by the fact that a lot of people who are coming to crypto for the first time are attracted by FOMO, or the fear of missing out, a condition that often leads people to make poor decisions without correct prior deliberation. Now, secondly, there's the technological factor. Interoperable blockchains require bridges on which a large amount of funds ought to be stored to ensure adequate liquidity. This combined with their novelty, and in some places, sloppy architecture, means that, well, they're an attractive target for hacks. Indeed, Horizon only used a two of five validation scheme. This means that only two blockchain accounts needed to be compromised for an attacker to basically approve any malicious transaction that they wished. A similar situation occurred with Ronin, where hackers only needed to convince five out of nine network validators to hand over the private keys to gain access to, well, the crypto that was locked inside the system. Moreover, many platforms employ inadequate two-factor authentication and security. This means that hackers are able to take advantage by employing brute force methods, earlier generated tokens, session cookies, man in the middle attacks, sim jacking, social engineering, even open authorization. Many users also view two-factor authentication as a sure sign that only they will be able to gain access to their account, but they'd be very wrong. So look, when it comes to blockchain systems, there are human factors and also technological factors at play that make becoming a crypto hacker kind of easy. So what kind of hack is right for you? Well, let's take a look at some of the more popular methods. If you're looking at hacking the blockchain itself, you might consider a 51% attack. Indeed, a 51% attack occurs when a group of attackers gain control over more than half of the nodes on any given network, and they do this in order to acquire authority. If authority is gained, new transactions can be delayed or duplicated. In other words, coins can be double spent and you can make a lot of money. We've mentioned validator control a few times today, and notably we pointed out that it's incredibly expensive to do. If you and your team have deep pockets, this could actually be a very viable option for you. In fact, there's a site that goes into detail regarding the theoretical cost of a 51 attack on different chains. Check it out, almost a million dollars per hour for an attack on Bitcoin. Whilst the capital required is often a barrier to this kind of hack, it's still very common. A notable example would be when in 2020, the ETC blockchain faced three consecutive 51 attacks in the same month. So if you've got the cash, set up to purchase as much hash power as you can until you've got 51% or more of the blockchain network under your control. Then get double spending. Now, if you're not looking to spend as much money, but you've got the skills, you might consider a routing attack as another way to hack the blockchain. Cryptocurrencies effectively rely on internet service providers like AT&T, if you're in the US, which facilitate online traffic. Now, in a routing attack, hackers intercept data as it's sent to an ISP and split the node network into partitions. All parts of the network continue to operate as usual, unaware that the other partitions are still functioning. The hacker is then able to create large amounts of fraudulent transactions in one partition, so that when the partition reverses, the real transactions are rejected by the network and the fake ones are legitimized. It's kind of like having, I don't know, your doppelganger legitimized as king and you're sent out onto the street. Now, if you're looking to engage in this kind of hack, I'd recommend researching the Border Gateway Protocol Hijacking Attack, or BGP for short. Now, here you'll be able to redirect traffic to your more specific route by announcing a smaller range of IP addresses than the other ASs had previously announced. Next, of course, is phishing. Now, when gaining access to someone's private key, the old ways are still the best. Typo squatting, for instance, involves the creation of a fake website that someone may accidentally visit by pressing an incorrect character when trying to visit a site. For example, the domain bonance.com might be set up to lure the credentials out of someone looking to visit binance.com. Bear in mind, however, that this might be quite expensive to do, and understandably so, for demand for similar domains is quite high. Also, it doesn't come without its risks. For example, in June, six people were arrested in the Netherlands and in the UK for their involvement in a $27 million typo squatting scam. You could also opt for the standard Nigerian Prince phishing scam, but to do something like hack into the official email account of an exchange to make your emails seem more legitimate, perhaps by using your contacts on the dark web. That's exactly how up to 4,000 wallets on the Czech Bitcoin exchange bitcash.cz were emptied in 2013. So, to set up your own phishing website, it's as easy as downloading the HTML index of the target web page, creating and implementing a PHP file into that code for password harvesting. I mean, that's effectively the tool that's going to be saving the keys of your victim, right? Then you'd have to host that very same PHP file so that the passwords would be stored somewhere, and then simply host the actual phishing page. It's literally that easy. Now, if you've got the skill and the time, but maybe you're a bit down on budget, Malware writing could be for you. 
By creating a keylogger in combination with a piece of software that obstructs the copy and paste function on a device, you'll be able to obtain the private keys of your user's wallet in no time. As soon as you've got the keylogger written, or let's say once you've downloaded it from a source of your choosing, you've got a few options for its distribution. You may wish to send some emails with infected attachments, so you could insert an infected USB device at some laptops right at a crypto convention, or you might actually wish to run the infected software from some specific website or torrent. And remember, you can always pay someone to do all of this for you by taking a trip to the darknet. So regardless of whether you're looking to take down an entire network with your North Korean gang of hackers, or you're just a disgruntled dude whose ex-wife's lawyer is forcing you to pay her more than you actually owe, the advice given today will surely come in handy. Remember, to bake a crypto hacker, you need three ingredients in varying amounts, skill, money, and motivation. The crypto hacking cake is so delicious due to the human and underlying technological factors. And you have various options for the baking process, from a quick microwave to lighting your entire house on fire. And as a final note, it's important to remember that these skills can also be used for good, and profitable good too. You can actually become a crypto bounty hunter. For example, Poly Network, the cryptocurrency platform which lost $610 million in a hack last year, offered that same hacker $500,000 in a bug bounty, and also immunity from legal penalties if he were to come forward. And the numbers get a lot bigger, actually. Back in 2020, Bitfinex offered a $400 million reward to the 2016 exchange hacker who made off with 120,000 Bitcoin. So, does crime pay? Well, let me know in the comments what you think. My name is Bradley Peake, this is Blockhouse, and thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time.